welcome back. Today's video is our Fall Food Friday <laughs> collaboration with Moss Family TV. This is our third video of um, this year of 2021. So I'm going to go ahead and film my intro now because I don't know if I'll get to <laughs> when I'm in the kitchen. But today I'm going to be making a... Um... So I'll also be making a candied bacon uh, pecan or candy bacon pumpkin bread. I may put pecans in it. I don't know. Um, this is really experimental. It's, it sounds kind of strange, but I know like the sweet and savory goes together, but I've seen a lot of people serving their pumpkin bread for breakfast. And I was kind of like, you know, a lot of times like you serve breakfast, you have the bacon, you have the sausage, whatever. So very risque, but <laughs> I'm going to try it and see how it is. I figured worst case scenario, um, we could just eat the bottom of the pumpkin bread and not eat the topping. I don't think it's going to be gross. Though. I think it's going to be good. So I'm going to kind of experiment. I am going to use a box mix for that just for something quick. But before I get started, I'm going to clean my kitchen up just a little bit. Um, I'll probably go ahead and get the chicken cut up just to get it cooking. And then I will get the countertop cleared off better and then get on with the rest of the rest. I'm just going to be getting our um, supper started and I'm just going to cut some chicken breast up into about one to two inch cubes and then I've got my um, spaghetti squash. I will show how I cook that but I'm going to go ahead and get the chicken cut up and then I'll show what I use to season it and get it in the pan and get it cooking and then we'll go ahead and get started on the spaghetti squash and then after that is done I will do um, experimental pump. <laughs> chicken is cut into bite-sized pieces. I've just got my pan on uh, medium heat and I'm going to pour some olive oil in the bottom of the pan just to heat up to the point of sizzling and then we'll go ahead and add our meat in. I don't measure anything as per usual but just enough that you're going to get a good coat on the bottom of the skillet itself. <laughs> So for seasonings, it's pretty basic. I just have some ground sage, which to me is kind of a fall flavor, and then garlic powder <laughs> as per usual. And um, I'm also going to use some curry powder. This is something my mom used in her broccoli and cheese casserole when we were kids, and the taste of it just kind of reminds me of fall. So um, not a lot of it. And then some ground black pepper, and then this smokehouse maple seasoning. This is actually kind of like a smoky maple salt almost. It's very coarsely ground. So we're not going to use any other salt because this will have enough salt in itself. But just to add a little fall flavor flair. <laughs> so now that our pan is hot, um, I can kind of see that the olive oil is starting to ripple a little bit. So I'm just going to drop my heat back down to, usually I put it on four, which is about medium to low heat. And then go ahead and add the chicken breast and let it start to sear in the pan. And I figured since I don't measure anything, I just let y'all see. <laughs> I'm using a little bit of ground black pepper, um, some ground sage. Again, I have no measurements. It's kind of just the way that it looks and I will taste it once it's um, fully cooked. And some garlic powder, which I use in pretty much anything that I cook. <laughs> I'm not going to use fresh garlic this time. And then the curry powder, um, I would recommend going lightly on this. To me, this is a very strong flavor, which, I mean, I really love the flavor of it, but I had a hard time getting it to come out of the container. But um, I probably used maybe like a quarter teaspoon of it in the end. And since I'm trying to get kind of like a golden sear on this meat, I'm just going to turn it back up to about medium or so. And then once I see that it's actually starting to brown, I'll bump it back down. But for now, I had to bump it up a little bit just to get it going. So I prefer to use fresh um, broccoli, but I just had the frozen. I didn't have any fresh. So 
I think the bag says to heat for, um, well, it actually depends on your microwave strength. So what I normally do is I heat it for about six minutes or so. So while the chicken is browning in the pan, I'm just going to go ahead and cut these in half or attempt to anyways. You will actually probably see my husband had to come in and help me. I always have a hard time cutting these and um, I need a new cutting board. So I'm trying to do it without hitting the counter and it's not working out the best. So I decided to take a break and let my husband help me with the squash because my hands started cramping. But I'm just coming back to the chicken and keeping it moving in the pan. Once you see that it's starting to sear and brown a little bit, you don't want it to burn. So you're going to want to turn your heat back down to low and let it continue to simmer. So... I just continue to stir the chicken and once it starts to look a little bit browned, kind of like this right here, um, usually it's fully cooked by then, it doesn't take long at all when it's cut this small. And I always make sure to taste test to see if it needs more seasoning and then I go ahead and drop it back down to low heat. So while the chicken is browning on the stove, I've just got my broccoli in the microwave and I ended up cooking each bag on 8 minutes each. But again, this is just to how you would like your broccoli prepared any other time. And now I'm putting the second bag in the microwave. You could also steam this on the stove, but this is just easier for me because I don't have to stay right on top of it. So I did taste it and it did need a little bit more seasoning, so it needed some um, salt taste to it. So I just added some more of the um, smokehouse um, maple seasoning. <laughs> and then gave it a good stir and then I also added a little bit more ground black pepper as well as um, some garlic powder and another thing I think I um, didn't show was I actually added probably about half a cup of water to the bottom of the pan just to deglaze it and keep the meat from drying out so now that the chicken is on the lowest setting on the stove I'm just gonna start to scoop out all of the seeds and um, just anything in the center part of the spaghetti squash. I have never seen anything like my look, y'all. I literally split my finger open from the top of the blade. Not the bottom, but the top pressed just right and I actually split my finger twice so I decided to give up and accept it as a defeat. <laughs> So now that everything is scooped out and cleaned up, I've just got them lined in a pan and I'm going to pour water in the bottom of the pan. Usually I pour enough just to um, cover the bottom, so maybe about half an inch or so. It doesn't have to be exact. And what this is going to do is cause it to steam in the oven, which in turn is going to help soften the squash. <laughs> squash is baking in the oven I'm just going to move on to finishing the um, broccoli and cheddar or broccoli and cheese mixture and I'm using pepper jack cheese and extra sharp cheddar and I'm just going to cut these into about one inch cubes or so and then once your broccoli has cooled you're just going to toss the cheese over into the broccoli you want your broccoli to be cooled that way it doesn't um, melt the cheese instantly and then it melts into the squash better And then I'm going to add a little bit more black pepper to this mixture because after you have the broccoli and the squash, it is going to be a little bit bland. So you are going to need to salt and pepper to taste. 
So now that the broccoli and cheddar is mixed together, I'm just going to set it aside and start on the pumpkin bread. I'm actually using a box of the Pillsbury Quick Bread um, pumpkin flavor. And I didn't do anything special with the bread. I followed the recipe except it calls for, I believe it is, one cup of water. So I had this little bit of milk that I needed to use up. So I used it, which it come out to about three quarters of a cup of milk. And then I just filled it the rest of the way with water. I always substitute the water for milk. Anytime I'm baking, it just makes it way better. So while the pumpkin bread is baking, our squash is now done. I set the timer for 40 minutes, but I think I ended up cooking it for about 45, maybe even 50 minutes. So now all I'm going to do is take a fork and just kind of lightly rake it. You don't really want to dig. You're more or less just kind of grazing it. And this is going to make your vegetable noodles that you can use. Um, you can also use these for anything like you could use these for regular spaghetti, chicken alfredo, anything like that. So once you have your noodles made, you're just going to spoon the broccoli and cheese mixture over this. And I kind of like use my hand to make sure that it sort of tucks down into the noodles. That way the cheese melts into it and makes it kind of stick together. Then once you have the broccoli and cheese mixture, then you can just start adding your chicken. And um, also kind of like tuck this down into it as well. That way it doesn't sit up on top and just dry out. So after your spaghetti squash is filled, I just like to take a drizzle of olive oil. And I actually had an actual bottle, but um, it kind of broke. So now I'm using this bottle, so it did kind of gush out. But um, I would recommend just kind of doing a light drizzle over each one. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more of the smokehouse maple on top. Because there was, these were really large <laughs> spaghetti squash, by the way. Um, so you're definitely going to want some kind of a salt. So I just went ahead and used this to bring the flavor in more. Three, two, one. So if any of you watched my first Fall Food Friday video, I made a um, pumpkin pecan cake with brown butter frosting. And this is actually very similar to that. I'm just going to take three tablespoons of butter and put it in my skillet and let it start to brown. So once your butter has started sizzling, you want to make sure that you keep it moving. I mentioned this in that video I was talking about earlier, but when you see the oil and the milk fat separate, you just want to keep it moving because this does burn very fast. So it's not something that you want to turn your back on. So once it starts to look foamy like this, usually it's right at the point of browning and um, you can let this brown till it is a very dark color. I just don't really like it that brown because I feel like it's kind of overpowering. I just like a lightly um, toasted flavor. So once it starts to foam over, I usually turn my heat off and just keep stirring it until I get ready to turn it into the bowl. 
So this is where things get a little bit weird. So I have a pre-cooked bacon that I bought. Rather than make my own, I just went with the quick me uh, method. <laughs> so I'm just going to pop this in the microwave and let it get to browning. So I'm going to use a whisk to whisk this together. Um, you could use your electric mixer if you have one. I have one, but... Um, I mean, it's really, <laughs> it's kind of out of commission, so I pretty much just do everything by hand. But I ended up using about three quarters of a cup of powdered sugar. I measured this just to give an exact measurement, but it is kind of like, you know, mix and go. So, like, if it looks too thin, you want to add more powdered sugar, more powdered sugar. And, of course, if it looks too thick, you add just a little bit more milk. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour the browned butter over the powdered sugar just so that it can stop the cooking process. That way it's not continually browning on the stove. And you don't have to get every last drop out because we're actually going to use this pan in a minute for something else. So it's okay if a little bit of butter is left behind. And then run your whisk through it really good and be sure that you incorporate the butter into the sugar mixture as well as possible. And then usually I think it calls for like two tablespoons of milk, but again, this is a eyeball and add as you go kind of thing. So I did end up adding the more powdered sugar, which come out to three quarters of a cup of powdered sugar to about two tablespoons of milk. And then once it's about the texture of um, a glaze, I guess, you can go ahead and add everything else. I'm using some maple extract and I added half of a teaspoon, but when I tasted it, it needed more. So I would say probably three quarters of a teaspoon of the maple extract. And then I ended up only using half a teaspoon of the vanilla extract as well. And then once that is well mixed, then you can add your cinnamon. I like to taste the cinnamon kind of strong in this glaze. I feel like it really brings out the brown butter taste. So, I mean, by preference, a lot of people would just leave it out. But I really just like to have a strong cinnamon taste. So, usually I add it, mix it in, taste it, and then end up adding a little bit more. So, I don't really have a measurement on this. So, once everything is all whisked together to taste, you can just set the bowl aside. And then in our pan that we've done the butter in... I actually have some of the crushed pecans from the last pumpkin <laughs> recipe that I made with pecans. And I'm just going to pour these straight into the pan that we browned our butter in. The butter is going to help it um, toast the pecans just a little bit, enough to bring out their flavor. And now comes the weird part. <laughs> so I ended up using four strips of bacon. But if I'm being quite honest, I really liked the taste of the bacon with this, but I felt like it needed more. So, I mean, you might could even <laughs> add some into the mix. I don't know if that would make it weird because, you know, it might cook and make it a little bit soggy, but I don't know. I thought this came out really good. So let me know if you like the idea of like the sweet and savory with the bacon or if you think this just sounds totally weird to you. And once all four strips of bacon were shredded up, you can also chop them up with a knife. I just used my hands. Um, I had this on low heat and I probably just let it kind of just, I don't know if simmer is the right word. <laughs> saute is probably the right word. But I probably just let it saute for about five minutes or so and then turn the heat off. So once it has heated thoroughly and um, just barely started to sizzle, I'm just going to go ahead and pour about two-thirds of the mixture into the icing and then hurry up and whisk it in together so I heated my icing a little bit um, in the microwave because it had stiffened because I had to go tend to willow for a second so this is definitely too liquidy so I am gonna let it um, solidify a little bit but I mixed about probably close to two-thirds of the bacon pecan mixture together in here and then I'm going to let this set up just a little bit more. This is just too, slightly too runny. You want more of a glaze-like consistency. And then I'll top the bread with it. And then um, I reserved like a third of it in the pan. You can still kind of see that I'm going to use just for um, topping after the glaze. Just to kind of look decorative. But I tasted this and this actually tastes really good. I think this would be good. Um, actually rolled into like a cinnamon roll like as the um, mixture like the cinnamon mixture I think this would be amazing which 
kind of gives me an idea that that might be something to try. Y'all, this turned out so good. I thought the presentation looked really nice. It was very easy because I did use a pre-boxed mix. So let me know if you try these out. These are very easy recipes. Thank you again for watching and thank you again to Moss Family TV for the Fall Food Fridays 2021 open collaboration. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see y'all later. Bye.